Photoshop CC has added a tremendously powerful way to add motion effects to an image in post-production with the new Path Blur. First, I'll convert this background into a smart object so that we can add a non-destructive filter that can be re-edited in the future as well as masked using the Smart Filter Mask. Then I'll choose Filter, Blur Gallery, and Path Blur. A path is automatically set in the image with two endpoints, and it's this path that's going to determine the direction of the blur. In fact, you can see there's a little arrow right here that's determining the direction to the right here. If I want to increase the speed of the blur, then I'll use the speed slider over here in the panel. This is the global setting for this path as well as any additional paths that I add to this image. However, we can always control the endpoints of each path independently. I can also change the way that the blur tapers at the end by using the taper slider. Again, this is another global setting. You can see by default the center blur is turned on, and the center blur is going to blur the pixels on either side, which is going to give us a, a more stable looking blur. However, if we want kind of a more fluid blur and a more directional blur, then we might want to turn that off. Right now, the endpoint is not active because I haven't actually selected one of the endpoints. In order to do that, I'll click on the endpoint here, and now I know that it's selected because it's got that dot in the center. If I want to reposition this or change the direction of the blur, you can watch as the direction changes as I move this around. If I want to change the speed of this endpoint because it's selected, I simply go over to the endpoint speed and decrease or increase one end of the blur independently from the other. Let me go ahead and stretch out this blur a little bit more by just clicking on the other endpoint and then dragging it. Now that I've made the path longer, we can see that there's actually a midpoint along the path. If I click and drag this, it will actually adjust the shape of the path and therefore the shape of the motion that I'm adding to this image. We can add as many points as we want to our path by simply clicking anywhere on that blue path, and then I can reposition the path. If I ever wanted to delete a point, I just need to make sure that it's the targeted or active point, it's the one that has the dot in it, and then I can tap the delete key in order to remove it. I can also add more than one path by clicking to set my start point, clicking again to set down another point, but you'll notice that Photoshop will continue to set down additional points. If I want to end the path, I position my cursor over the end point until I see this little icon and then I tap again in order to kind of stop that path. Now, if I add a second path, it might be because I want the blur to go in a different direction, or I might actually want to remove the blur from one area of the image. In order to do this, I would click on the end point and then I can use the endpoint speed slider in order to decrease that to zero so that I'm not getting any motion. I'll click on the first point or the start point and then go ahead and decrease that as well. So now you can see that by using multiple paths, I'm getting motion in one area while I'm limiting the motion in another area. Now in order to delete that, I'll simply tap the delete key. So far, we've only changed the direction and the speed of the blur, but we haven't actually changed the shape of the blur itself. So let's select this initial path, and I'm going to just decrease the speed a little bit. It's a little too extreme right now. And I might also decrease the taper a little bit. And then you'll notice that if you click on the endpoints, you can edit the blur shapes. Now this might be off by default, but you can simply click in order to enable this. The blur shapes will always have an end point and a center point, and you cannot add additional points to the blur shape. However, you can select this, and you'll notice as I drag it around, I'm actually changing the shape of my blur. And I can either do this in tandem with both of them by holding down the command key, or we can go ahead and manipulate them independently by dragging the end point out and then dragging that center point. So as you can see, we can get some really, really creative effects this way. 
Now I think that's a little too drastic for this image, so I'm going to go ahead and just bring these in a little bit. And let's bring this one in a little bit too. But it is sure getting some great motion and colors in the image. All right, over in the motion blur effects, you'll notice that there's a strobe strength and a strobe flash slider. We could use this, for example, maybe to emulate a rear flash synchronization. In order to do that, I want to have the speed maybe around 100 and the taper around 10% or so. And then I'm going to change the strobe strength. I'm going to increase it to about maybe 25. And I'm going to decrease the strobe flashes down to maybe one. Now we can see if we toggle on and off the preview, so there's before and there's after, we can see all of the motion that that one path is adding for us. Now, like I said, we could create other paths in order to limit the motion, but I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And you'll notice over here on the Layers panel, I previously made a selection of the cowboy and copied it to its own layer using a layer mask so that I could get a nice, sharp version of the cowboy with this great blurred background behind him. But one thing you'll notice, if we do zoom in, is that the blurred background no longer contains the noise that the original photograph had. So in order to match that, this is another great reason to use smart objects and smart filters, because now I can add a secondary filter on this background and add noise to it. And I think probably the best way to do that would be to go back under the Filter menu, go to the Camera Raw filter, because in Camera Raw we have the Effects panel right here. And let's go ahead and zoom in to 100% to make sure that we can see what we're doing. I want to use the grain amount. I'm just going to increase the amount of grain here. I'm going to make that grain a little bit larger, just roughly estimating what it looked like in the original. I might also make it a little bit rougher. Just decrease the amount a little bit. Once I've got it the way I like it, I'll click OK. And what I'm doing is I'm adding back in the grain to the background to that blurred area so that it seamlessly matches the cowboy that I had lifted, the sharp version, on top of the blurred layer below. Excellent. There you have it, a flexible and creative way to add directional motion to your image in Photoshop CC.